might know by power of a by my spirit. By my spirit. <clears throat> by my spirit. You know, there are multiple wills. There's a will of the flesh, the will of the soul, the will of emotion, the will of evil, the will of rebellion, and so forth. But there's only one will that brings freedom, and that is the will of the Spirit. The will of the Spirit is the only will that brings true freedom. It is the perfect will. The Bible says that this is a good, acceptable, but perfect will. The perfect will can only be done by the will of the Spirit. And you got to remember that the word spirit means breath. So as we cooperate with the spirit, with the breath of God, he brings us to another place all the time. The more you sow in the spirit, the more you reap life. Those are promises. Those are covenants. But when you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. Amen? And in Romans chapter 8 and verse 12, if you'll go there for a moment, please. It says what? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to what? You're going to die. What if you're a believer? You're still going to die. But I'm a believer. Well, you ain't believing if you're living according to the flesh. Because the word believe means what? Follow. So that blows the theology of once saved, always saved, doesn't it? Hallelujah. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. In other words, if you live according to the will of the Spirit, you will live. And God will bring you life and life abundantly. So one of the keys in this area uh, is, you know, if, if the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If those things are happening in your life, the enemy's got access to you. You're not being led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the what? Is it the Spirit's will that you become a son and daughter of God? Yeah. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So living according to the Spirit, in other words, being led by the Spirit, makes us sons and daughters. The Spirit bears witness within us that we are children of God, offsprings of the anointed one and his anointing, and joint heirs of everything of his. So many times we have a hard time in the mind. And it needs to bypass the mind and get into the spirit. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3, 4, please. Not by might, no by power, but by my spirit. And he said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. In verse 4, we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. In other words, from his spirit. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the what? It is the ministry of the Spirit. It's a ministry of breath. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives. The Spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? In other words, the ministry of the will of the Spirit of God. 
For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, and the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a bag over his head, I mean a, a veil over his face. He was the unknown preacher. Amen? Who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily over the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for until they, this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in the Christ or in the Spirit. In the what? Spirit. Amen. That's why people get saved. There's a difference between saved and born again. Does everybody understand that? You are born of the Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's a difference. Now you're no, living another reality. Does everybody get that? You're living, a, but when you're just saved, when somebody first gets Jesus as Lord, as, as Savior, because they can't accept Him as Lord yet, they don't know what the heck that is. So they accept Jesus as Savior, just their outer quarters. But they're really not born of the Spirit yet, but there's that process. So they still think carnally. They're still living carnally. And some of them never exceed to get into the second chamber, living in the first chamber, the outer court. And they keep doing the same things over and over and over because they got no power, no spirit, no presence. And they think that the Word of God is just going to rescue them. But without the presence of God, you got nothing. Because the Word of God cannot be activated without the presence of God. Amen? So there's a lot of Bible thumpers. They know the page numbers. And they keep recycling. They can't get free. Why? No, no presence. No spirit. Verse 15. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Because they're hardened. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord. Hallelujah. The veil is what? Now, are you ready for the next verse? Speak it with me. Now the Lord is the? Oh, snap. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or what? Freedom. Freedom. Only where the Spirit of the Lord is. But we all with unveiled face, beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So who transforms you? The Lord. The Spirit. Amen? Your cooperation with the Spirit of God by sowing in the Spirit will change you. I get people that tell me, man, I can memorize the Bible inside and out. I said, praise God. Then why are you still smoking and fornicating? Well, the word, you know, don't give me that crap, man. You're still using. I'm not using it anymore. I just smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. Or I chew tobacco. That's using. So you don't huff it, you chew it. Anyways. Addiction is addiction. There's an addictive spirit that will go from one thing to another and even use sugar. Hello. And then people still carry that same behavior. Amen? Listen, we are in the ministry of the will of the Spirit of the Lord. Because only where His Spirit's will is manifested, you can be free. And that's His greatest desire, is for me and you to be free. Colossians 1, 9. We love to worship. We love to worship until we drop. People shop till they drop, right? And that's the old saying. We worship till we drop. You worship till, you, you know, the enemy, you can't hear his voice no more. Because he kicks and screams. Man, you got to grab your flesh by the throat and throw it in the presence of God. And then God gets the sweet aroma because you're cooking. Amen? Amen? You become grilled, rotisserie, sweet aroma. 
that speak it. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. To be filled with the knowledge of his will. The will of who? The will of the Spirit. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. That's the purpose. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Listen, knowledge doesn't come by just studying the word. Knowledge will come by relationship with him. See, there's difference between eternal knowledge that's written and eternal knowledge that's being released. It's called revelation. Revelation knowledge is different. Hello. Praise God. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of the God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image and invisible God and firstborn over the creation, all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power, powers. All things were created through him and what? And for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn, firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Praise God. Be filled with the knowledge of his will. This is heavenly wisdom. Amen. And heavenly understanding. Remember, the wisdom from above does what? Tells you what to do. And understanding tells you how to do it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age or this world, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to what? Nothing. All these politicians who think they're somebody, they're nothing but modern-day Pharisees and Sadducees. They're coming to nothing. woo -hoo. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. Had they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. If you love him, you will obey him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His Spirit, in other words, the Spirit, the will of the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of the man except for the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man doesn't get it, doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But, but this is what separates us from others. Amen? The Spirit of God, the presence of God. Why? Because we desire the Spirit to have his will. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So it is the will of the Spirit that we manifest the mind of Christ. That we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Even in the book of Revelation it says, and those who have ears to hear what the Spirit says. 
And then there are rewards for that. In Acts chapter 1, in verse 4, Being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will, will, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? But Jesus wasn't talking about that. And he said, and it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall what? You shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So is it a will of the Spirit that you be empowered? Yeah, man. So you can overcome temptation and everything else. John 16, verse 5. I've had people that are just, I'm telling you, sweet people, but they're just deceived. Because without the Spirit of God, you will not know the truth. You'll know some of it, but you won't know the deep things of God. It's impossible. Trying to tell me that tongues isn't for today, that the gifts aren't for today, that God just healed them, but he doesn't heal now. I thought, bummer. Man, you missed it. You missed it big time. I saw one guy get on TV and say he took, the vow, he took a vow of poverty to please God. I thought, what an idiot. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to us. He, didn't, he was impoverished. In fact, he was wanted. Look what they brought him, gold and everything else. Amen? He had everything he needed. But he wasn't out flaunting things. He did it for the kingdom. Everything he did was for the kingdom. It was about his dad's business. And that's how, if, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you ain't looking about you no more. You're looking about fulfilling the Father's business. Amen? <laughs> Let's speak it. But now, Jesus said, now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless... I tell you the truth is to your what? Advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict. So is it a will of the Spirit to convict? Yes. You know, again, I've shared this before. Don't look for justification or blame. Look for conviction. We should be looking for conviction in our life every day. And, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? Because they didn't have the Spirit. They couldn't comprehend it. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, in other words, you, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit with fire, hello, he will guide you into all truth. This is the spirit's will, that you know all truth, and he'll guide, allowing him to guide you to all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to what? To come. So if you're truly hearing what the Spirit is saying, you will know things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Man, that means that we lack nothing. We lack nothing. He said you convict. He'd bring judgment. He'd guide us. We're to receive and to declare. That is the will of the Spirit. Isaiah 61, verse 1.
You know, God won't force anything on you. That's why there's a part where you must desire. And the Spirit is always increasing that area to where you desire more the things from above than the things of the earth. You're not in this room tonight without a desire that was impressed by the Spirit of God. No, I chose. No, you didn't. You, you cooperated, but it was the Spirit of God that put the desire in you. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Is that His will? Yeah. To what? To preach good tidings to the poor. That means give a message of truth. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim freedom to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound or been taken. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for what? Mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness for oppression. That they may be called trees of righteousness. Is it the will of the Spirit for you to be a tree of righteousness? Yes. The planting of the Lord that he may be glor The Spirit is always trying to glorify the Lord. Amen. That means you've got to get baptized with fire and the anointing. There's always evidence. One of the evidence is tongues. Everybody get it? Tongues, powerful gift. Well, I don't believe in tongues. You got a spirit of unbelief. Besides stupid. Hello. Jude, verse 14. Now Enoch, now Enoch, now Enoch. Have you ever read about Enoch? Powerful. I mean, there's a guy that pleased God. Amen? Now think about this. Enoch wrote a book. It's called the book of Enoch. Amazing, isn't it? Now, here's a guy that hung around with the Lord for, what, three, 400 years? And then he took him. I'd say he's got a lot to say. He's got a real lot to say, doesn't he? And if you've ever read the book of Enoch, he talks about all the fallen angels, put on flesh, went into women, had offsprings, they became demons when they were killed. He explains everything. He even names the 200 angels that put on flesh. And they even went to him and begged him to pray, to, to talk to God to see if they can get rescued. And God said, no. And this went on for 400 years on the earth. They seduced. They perverted. They became cannibalistic. They were giants. They were destroying humanity. And they continued to produce offspring. God destroyed them all. And so the Lord said everything was violent. Even their intents were constantly evil and wicked. Amen? And in, in the book of Enoch, he explains all of these things. Now, I listen. The Bible can't hold everything God did. It's impossible. Amen? But what we have is sufficient. But it is the beginning. It's like an open door to many things into the spirit realm, which God can reveal to you through revelation. That's why it's so important in praying in the spirit, praying in tongues where mess, uh, mysteries are released to you, and you begin to see and learn more. Revelation comes. Things begin to happen. All of a sudden, the, the Holy Spirit opens up the doors. And you go in the Lord's library. And it's like, Whoa! And there's all kinds of things that you can learn from. It's phenomenal. We have a library called Eternal Library. <laughs> That's because I was taken to the Eternal Library. But in this, there are so many things that God has for us. And we are about to embark on tremendous open doors from heaven. We are on cutting edges right now. We're seeing the enemy being exposed. They don't, they're having a hard time. They're, they're bringing in now that uh, 
uh, some of the righteous have taken over Congress. Now they're bringing in all those who've been lying and cheating and exposing it all. They just expose all the border stuff. I don't know if you saw or not um, uh, um, earthquakes in um, Turkey, which was phenomenal. I mean, we've had more. People don't realize there was over 17,000 earthquakes in a year. Talk about, that's a lot, isn't it, all over the world. Because we're in the beginning of birth pangs, beginning of sorrows. We're actually slowly coming to the end of it, and tribulation will start. But again, we're still entering the seven year of prosperity before seven years of famine. And when that starts, then tribulation will start. Hallelujah. But God is exposing. You can't have, pro you can't have plenty, right? But the enemy keeps stealing. So the enemy's got to get put out of the way. Does everybody get it? <clears throat> so this is the time the enemy will, he's got to be exposed first to get put out of the way. So we can have seven years of plenty before seven years of famine. Okay. Verse 14. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. <clears throat> to do what? To do what? Execute judgment on all. Is that the will of the Spirit? Yeah. To convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them, nobody gets away. I don't care if you're dead or you're hiding. You ain't getting away. Death is not going to free you. From judgment. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, and how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. Are we in the last time? I mean, they're mocking them all over. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lust? These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. That means they can't have the Spirit's will. There have been people, I mean, I, I've seen it. There are comedians that are mocking the Lord. Next thing you know, poof, fell right off, dead. Multiple people. They had, I was on YouTube, and they had all, multiple people. They showed all these people that were mocking the Lord died instantly. <clears> the <throat> falling out wherever they were. And verse 20, <clears throat> but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your what? Most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, which means praying in what? Tongues. Amen. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. He says, I will give you a what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put what? My spirit, my spirit within you, and then what? cause you to walk in my statutes. In other words, he's going to cause you. He's going to will you to do his will. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. He will cause, he will will his spirit, his will in your life. And Mark 16, 16. And he who what? Believes. What's the word believe mean? To follow. It still baffles me how many people call themselves a believer and they're really not following. Oh, I believe, but I don't believe the Bible. Oh, I don't believe you need to assemble either. I don't believe in going to church. I don't believe in tithing. I don't believe in any of those things. 
Why? Because you're not a believer. That's why. But I'm a believer. No, you're not. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he who believes and is baptized with the Holy Spirit will be what? Saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Come on. In my name they will do what? Cast out demons. That's the first thing he tells you. Why? Because that's what your fight is against. Demons, voice of the demons. And they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. And that doesn't mean you're going to go learn another language in college <clears throat> or school. You're going to get a new tongue to pray in, in tongues. Amen. And they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly. It doesn't mean you're going to test God and siphon your neighbor's car. Because you're going to die. Amen. You will by no means hurt them. And, 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 if you eat, and, and if you eat anything or drink anything, it's not going to hurt you. <clears throat> they will lay, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It says they will recover. Now, recover has to do with when you're laying hands on the sick, they can be healed then and there. Amen? Or there's that process. Why? Because God is by his spirit because he's going to cause the will of his spirit to begin to motivate that person to do things that are going to bring healing to their bodies. Everybody get it? In other words, they're going to quit the sugar. They might stop drinking. They might do certain other things. They might know things that are harming them. They might take things that are more healthy for them. Does everybody get it? That's what the word says. Physician, heal yourself, right? I mean, these bodies are made to heal. They're self-healing bodies. Can you imagine if you got a paper clip? If you got a paper cut, you'd bleed to death? I never heard of anyone bleeding to death from a paper cut. Why? Because your body heals itself instantly. As soon as you harm your body, it's already in the process of healing. That's what swelling does, too. You know, you sprain your ankle. Why is there a swelling? Because it brings a cast there. But we put ice on it because we know we want it. it, it that swelling there causes a more of a delay but your body is self healing and self protecting because that's how God created it amen he's created things for you to have an immune system that can be built to overcome anything so it's the will of the spirit to get heck no it isn't you know it's amazing how many people did not stand up for that to call themselves believers when the Spirit would tell them things to come, I'm sure he said, no. But they were, oh, they moved their voice away and said, but I need the money. I need this. I need that. Galatians 5, 16. I say then walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or your desire or what you're influenced to do that's offensive to God. So the spirit, the will of the spirit is that you walk with him. Amen? Why? The closer you are to the spirit of the Lord, the more you'll see, the more you'll know, and the more power you'll have. Hallelujah. Now we know that the fruit of the Spirit of the Lord also is love. Love. The Bible says love. God is love. Amen. Love is, has to do with forgiveness. People that are still bitter and unforgiving, they ain't love there. That's an open door to the enemy. It brings self-destructive. You know, forgive those. Bless those. It doesn't matter. And, you know, I, people do stupid stuff all the time. And so, you know, I just forgive them and bless them. Well, the Lord says, the Word says, if you forgive them and bless them, coal's going to come down on them. Hello? And some of them need to be baptized in the fire of God. <clears throat> or a visitation of the Lord so they can get the, you know, the hell scared out of them and make room for heaven. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, please.
to say, though I speak with tongues of men and angels, and of angels, <clears throat> but not have love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding of mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith, all faith, so that I could <clears throat> remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. <clears throat> love does what? Suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, it's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in the iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. I think there needs to be a correction on here, because it says, thinks no evil, well, I think everybody thinks some sort of evil at some time. But it doesn't mean that you're not in love. Amen? I mean, you know, there's, there's that thought of vengeance sometimes. But, you know, you, you, you know, that's not God's will. Does everybody get it? I mean, that, that, that's, you know, that's just it, living on earth in a world that's demonic all over. You're going to be bombarded to react. No matter what's going on, you're going to be bombarded. The enemy wants you to react because you sow in the flesh and then you reap corruption. But we got to choke, react, until respond comes. Amen? Like I said, it doesn't mean that you're not in love just because you thought of something. It's how you react to it. You know? Whether you're reacting according to it. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Good. Says, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. I'm going to close at 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Are you going to do that without the Spirit? No. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your separation. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has given us his what? Holy Spirit to do his will. Amen? It is the will of the Spirit. That's what we're always looking for. The will of the Spirit. Not our will, not your will of emotion, not your will of desire. Is this the will of the Spirit? Amen? Sometimes there's a common sense, and sometimes common sense will even interfere with the will of the Spirit. So you need to hold back. Hold on. Look, when you don't know what to do, you don't do anything. The Spirit will come. If you give him the opportunity, and he will guide you. Because everything according to the will of the Spirit is his time. Time. And one of the things the enemy likes to do is get people out of time. Even though it might seem the right thing to do. I was at places, and, and I've had people come up to me and say, Would you lay hands on me and pray for me? And the Holy Spirit said, Don't you dare. I say, Okay, no. No, not right now. Don't ask me why, but I'm not going to do it because the Spirit says, no, I'm not going to do it. There's a reason. Does everybody understand? So no matter what is now, of course, if you're at a red light, the Spirit's not going to tell you to run it. Amen? There's a common sense to that. Although I don't like to be behind people that do the speed limit, but anyway. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, every one of you are the same way. Don't give me another bed. <laughs> the will of the Spirit. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost is the will of the Spirit. When that begins to be broke or interfere with, you know, something's not right. Wait. Amen. Wait. And God will bring it. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal what you've released to us with the blood of Christ and the anointing of Christ so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory and bring it to remembrance in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?